Sean Ardell, let's start off with the, uh, with the story. More revelations, more allegations today about John O'Donoghue's uh, expenses when he was Minister for Arts, Sports and Tourism. €550,000 is the allegation in today's Sunday Tribune. That's the figure they're claiming he ran up in expenses. Yes, it's a huge figure, all right. And uh, things have changed dramatically. Certainly there is no way that that type of figure will be run up uh, in these times. As we all know, even the Taoiseach, Brian Cowan, when he was going to Ted Kennedy's funeral, um, uh, got the uh, public transport method from terminal to terminal in, in Heathrow and uh, was uh, travelling on the business class even though he was offered and got an upgrade from uh, <coughs> British Air. But uh, John O'Donoghue, I understand, uh, has written a letter to the paper uh, claiming that... Uh, his, a lot his, of solicitors, his solicitors, his solicitors, have, yes, yeah. Yeah, the, the they're various They're making things claims that they're inaccurate, and, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, he's you also read, yeah. t- going to talk to, I under, from the papers, I understand that he's going to talk to the leaders of the party. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that uh, obviously before the Doyle resumes and uh, to uh, um, he is the Cahirlach of, of, of the Doyle and uh, that has a lot of prestige attached to it. Yes, and, and, and he would he's destroying, have to have the, he's destroying the position right now no, uh, by hiding behind the smokescreen of <coughs> Count Corla. But that's what he's no. doing, Sean Arda. Well, he has to have the full support of all of the uh, members of the Doyle to be able to operate effectively. And I understand that he's going to talk to uh, the various leaders of all of the, the parliament of the parties. And um, certainly, uh, unless the, the leaders are generally in, uh, uh, have no objection, uh, he will continue in office, I'm sure. But uh, if they are totally opposed uh, to him on the basis of these, well then, of course, that's another question. But I cannot see that happening. I, I just, I, you know, when you, if, if these figures are correct in the Sunday Tribune, and it's worth your while for those those of you who are interested in this story, to get hold of it because they give numerous accounts of uh, various travel expenses that O'Donoghue um, managed to um, ramp up over a period of years when he was minister. Why, why was he bringing his wife, Kate Ann, on so many of these journeys? And the two of them are travelling on first class tickets. That's just a disgrace that he was doing that. Um, I, I don't know exactly what the, the circumstances are behind it, um, but I'd say two things. One, um, normally if a, a wife is uh, brought along, that that is paid for by the the minister or the member, unless there is an overwhelming uh, reason for, yes. from a social point of view, but in this that case, the it wife seems, has got to be No, but the state, it seemed, picked up the bill for the first class tickets, which O'Donoghue and his wife took on numerous occasions when he was minister for arts, sports and tourism. Not least, actually, the pair of them then managed to stay in five-star hotels, sometimes, according to the Sunday Tribune, at a cost of €900 Euro a night. They also hired limousines. We've heard numerous stories about the limousines. O'Donoghue didn't even have the manners to get up and just use regular transport to go from one terminal to the other when he was minister, but he thought that he could just fool the state and hire limousines. It's just extraordinary. And it comes on the back of the Auditor and Controller General's uh, report at the end of the week showing mm-hmm. how much uh, the state has misused funds and yet again more revelations about false 600,000 euros spending on, an, on, on a television ad which was never broadcast. Yeah, well, all of these are horrible stories and uh, one would, would prefer if they weren't out there but not so out that they never happened. Um, the minister would have been... Uh, all of these travel arrangements would have been made by somebody in his office. Now, whether he was personally involved and whether he approved the various expenditures, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, these are matters that he is going to discuss with the various leaders, and they are matters that would not happen uh, in today's circumstances. In May 2005, Linda, I'll bring you in just a moment. This is just one of the revelations in today's Sunday Tribune. In May 2005, the countries, as they call them here in the trip, best travelled couple headed to France for an Irish film board promotion, thought of coincided with the Cannes Film Festival. They flew by government jet at a cost of €23,670, while car hire there came to 4093 The hotel bill on that trip for O'Donoghue, his wife, and two departmental officials amounted to 8177 or more than 2000 each. Linda O'Shea, Farron, wh- wh- what do you make of this story? Um, <coughs> with all due respect, Sean, I don't think this is defence 
defensible in any way. And I'm the not idea. not defending anything. Oh, good. So you're not defending it. No, it um, wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. And, at and these what times. you're saying is now it, it isn't happening. That's uh, right. But it was happening with the same party who was in government for the past two terms of government, and now suddenly they're stopping it. Well, at least that's good news going forward. John O'Donoghue, of all of the people in this country who have passed through our Doyle, um, I want to hear straight from John O'Donoghue's mouth. This is a man who's well able to stand up when he was in opposition and just race through everybody who as much as didn't, you know, uh, instantly answer all of his questions. He had speech after speech. They were all funnily named now, another brick in the wall and all this stuff. John O'Donoghue, you're the Count Corla. Get out and tell us all. Don't speak through your solicitors or to party leaders behind closed doors. You're a big man. You're well able to speak. Get out and tell us what's going on. Um, Labour yeah. Senator Alex White, well, what do you make of the story? absolutely right there in terms of, I mean, I think he does hold an important position. And I was just interested to hear Sean saying there that it was sort of going to come down almost to the leaders of the opposition as to whether they thought he should remain in office. Uh, I thought that was kind of an odd, uh, an odd point. But, you know, he, is, he does have an important position, but that doesn't, it's not so important or so elevated that, as Linda rightly says, that he can't be expected to come out and make a statement and deal with these, these, uh, these uh, points and these allegations or these findings. And, I mean, even if they're substantially true, I mean, even if th there may well be some items, aspects that are that are inaccurate, but even if they're substantially true, no reasonable person could think that they're other than excessive. They're absolutely excessive, some of these claims. Even, by the way, at a time, and Sean says that, look, they should, it, it, it happened at a time, it wouldn't happen now. It should never have of happened. Of course exactly. it should never it have happened. Matter, it doesn't matter, it even if the country happened. is a wealthy country, and exactly. even if we think we're a wealthy country. You see, I, this, it's, look at the detail, there's loads of detail in the paper, yes, and people can read it. Yes. But if we can rise above the detail just for a minute. And, you know, I was out canvassing yesterday in the Lisbon <coughs> Treaty, and, you know, we are just talking before the programme came on the air in terms of the level of public discourse, the fear that's out there, the sense of the country being going down the tubes and everything else. Trust is the biggest problem that we have. I mean, a number of people said to me yesterday afternoon when I was trying to persuade them to vote yes in the Lisbon referendum that they don't trust what they're being told. They don't trust politicians and they don't trust the government in particular, as John Gormley acknowledged during the week. And this just adds adds to the sense of a lack of trust. And Sean Ard is a decent and reasonable yeah. person, and <coughs> I know, know him, and I know that. But the fact is he can't get away from the fact that the trust in the government that he supports is gone, and this is only making it worse. But this is where, Alex, we need to start seeing that accountability is going to become a part of the culture in our society. Absolutely. And, and it expenses. isn't. It Every isn't right now. Every single item of expenses for, of any politician should be published, they, almost as it happens. They have almost all Yes. Yes. They have yes. unvouched yes. expenses. Yes. In Britain, you had a, fa a huge fallout with vouched expenses when those expenses were being investigated by the Daily Telegraph, and and they have far less expenses than the Irish uh, politicians. Yeah, yeah, and and. It, it's just, it seems to me extraordinary. John O'Donoghue seems to now epitomise the kind of disdain that the politicians had when they were ruining this country, when the government was ruining this country in, in the way they dealt with the developers here. And the fact that he would hide behind the smokescreen of Kian Corla and oh, no, claim really. that, you know, it, so he's a bug uh, all way, of us and he doesn't have to he say what he was doing. Run for his seat. As Kian Corla, he's automatically elected. So another nice little, you know, idea that... Yeah, eventually. He, he will, will eventually. But I mean, no, no, he will eventually have to deal with this. Yes. I mean, I think in fact, like a statement, or you know, is going to he's going to have to deal with it publicly, and I'm sure he realised. And a lot of this expenditure would have been during the time where we were all worrying about Bertie Ahern's money. Yes. So as the public was examining how our Taoiseach of the day was running his affairs, presumably some of these bills were being clocked up.